What up, folks? So, really short on time. Um, got a lot of stuff going on today. I'm trying to do a lot of stuff for Packernut, my Packer site. Uh, uh, trying to break down, and just, just for myself, I want to learn more about Jair Alexander and learn more about these picks and what's going on today. It's just fast and furious. But I have a draft YouTube channel. It is my sworn sacred duty to uh, go over the first round here, and that's exactly what I want to do. And I, I, I need some time to kind of process it, too. I mean, it went so quick, and, man, that, that was exciting. I don't know about you, but I, I I freaking loved that. That was awesome. So maybe, as I'm going through this, it'll help me to kind of sort it out in my mind. I've been trying to do that. I had a long drive home, uh, hour and a half-ish drive to get back home, so I was trying to kind of sort through some stuff in my head. Um but let's just get started right at the top. Baker Mayfield, bit of a surprise. You know, it's one of those things. You know, if I say nobody expected it, you got 50% of the people saying I knew. You didn't know anything. But um, I like Baker, man. I, you know, I think a lot of people are saying, um, you know, it wasn't a great pick. Um, in my mind, and again, not a scout. That's not my thing. That's not what I do. But just from my eye as a, as a football fan, as somebody who watches this stuff, I'm looking at it and I'm going, I like, I like uh, Josh Rosen and I like Baker Mayfield. And the rest of them, eh. I mean, Lamar's cool because of what he can do with his mobility and all that. Sam Darnold, eh. You know, he does a lot of stupid stuff. So I, I like it. It's kind of vindication for me that, you know, it's not just, uh, it's not just me missing something. I mean, you, you got legitimate GMs and front office people going, no, no, Baker's the best. He's the top guy. That said, if I'm playing the odds, I'm just going to say this is a stupid pick because it's so hard to get this right. The, the value of the number one over, overall pick is so high. Um, the, the expectation for how good this guy has to be is crazy. Plus, it's Cleveland. No offense to the Cleveland fans, um, but as Tremont Williams uh, recently said, you know, <laughs> There's just something about that place. I don't know what it is, but you go there and it's, you just kind of suck. I ad libbed the last part, but that's more or less it. There's just something about it. It's a it's a toxic kind of environment. It's just, I don't know. I wish them the best though. I'm 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 becoming a Cleveland fan. They've got all these picks. It's like, come on, guys, you guys got to do something. You know, as a football fan, I want them to succeed. As a guy that that appreciates Baker Mayfield and what he's done, I'd like to see him succeed. Uh, a lot of those guys are ex-Packers over there, um, the front office people, so it would be kind of cool uh, to be able to see them be the ones to turn this thing around. So, um, you know, it, my expectation, he's not going to be very good, and Cleveland's not going to be very good. But uh, I'm hoping that they do all right. Qu uh, Saquon Barkley was a surprise. I think uh, I mocked it a couple times, but uh, as time went on, it kind of became consensus that, no, nah, they're going to go quarterback. It makes a lot more sense. So when his name was called, uh, big surprise. But um, I don't know. I'm real. I'm real conflicted because I get it. You know, on one hand, it's like Eli's our guy. We know we can win with Eli. <sighs> on the other hand, it, I'm wondering what's going on with the Giants a little bit, just because nobody expected them to suck that much. And I'm wondering if there's sort of that toxic environment going on over in New York as well, um, to the point where, you know. It just doesn't make sense, the the amount of talent that's on their team for them to fall that far. So what is Saquon really going to do? If your quarterback is no good, if your wide receiver situation is a mess, if you don't have a very good offensive line to be able to block for Saquon Barkley, if your defense, which presumably was decent or at least you know seemed like it was going up and up and up, um, is all of a sudden no good, I, I just don't see what a running back is going to do to turn this thing around. Um but I don't. I, I, he's one of those guys I'm just excited to watch. A lot of these guys, that's what it comes down to. I've, we've been talking about these guys for so long. How cool is it going to be to actually see these guys play? And I was talking to a friend of mine about it, you know, and it's it seems to be always these sort of generational guys that are that are really, really good running backs. You know, Adrian Peterson was, I think, that guy for a real long time. You had Barry Sanders. You had the Walter Paytons and those types of guys. And with AP leaving, you know, depending on what you think of Le'Veon Bell or whatever, it's kind of up in the air as far as these guys that are just absolutely dominant freaks. So it would be kind of cool, as again, as a football fan, um, to be able to see Saquon Barkley uh, kind of step into that role and be something kind of special. It's always just fun, you know, as a fan to see just, I don't know, freakish type people just do freakish type things. Sam Darnold to the Jets I think was cool for the Jets. Um, 
as I said, I don't really get it, but uh, I will concede that there is something special about them. Um, it, it feels like because the Jets also have somewhat of a losing tradition, you know, the Jets picked him. He plays for USC. There's plenty of reason to look at this and go, mm, yeah, no, he's going to suck. <laughs> he's going to be real bad. Uh, but we'll see. I mean, that'll be interesting for me as somebody who does this kind of thing and who is a, uh, you know, again, I'm, and I, when I say I'm not a scout, I don't, I don't even, I don't really want to be, you know, the amount of work and everything that goes into that. That's, I'm just going to stay out of that lane. But as somebody who watches film and wants to evaluate, you know, when I look at it and I go, I don't think he's that good. I just don't see it. It'll be interesting to see, like, if he really does good, then I got to really hone in and be like, okay, what is it? Because there's something, there's something here that's really important that I need to see when I'm going to make uh, determinations on quarterbacks. And I need to find out what it is. If he sucks, I'm going to look at him and go, eh, I was right. So even if, even if I was wrong about certain things, uh, ultimately I watched a guy play quarterback and not do very well, and he didn't do very well in the NFL, so that's fine. Number four, Denzel Ward to Ohio, from Ohio State to uh, the Cleveland Browns. That one was a big shock. Um, as a Packers fan, I was kind of looking at that going, oh, here we go. You know, the, there's a couple guys you're kind of hoping maybe they slide. You know, the Packers will trade up and get them. Uh, Ward and Chubb and those kinds of guys uh, you want to see maybe slide, so maybe you got a shot. Uh, when I saw Denzel Ward go to at four, it was pretty shocking. And I, I don't really like it. I just don't. I've been saying it for quite a while, and it's nothing really against Denzel, but you look at the unbelievable quality of the corners last year. I mean, that was a unique corner class, the talent. And you look at how late those guys went and how good they were with, with you know, Marshawn Lattimore and Tredavious White and all these guys. That was a rare, unique, special group. And then coming into this year, it was like, eh, it's kind of thin. They're not all that good. There might be a couple first-round-ish type guys. You know, Denzel Ward probably be a first-round, mid to late. And even at mid, it was kind of like, really? Because he's going to go about the same same place that Denzel or that uh, Marshawn Lattimore went you know he's, he's gonna go like 10-ish or what I, I just don't see it like how all of a sudden he's that good then he goes at four I would be stunned I mean listen he has to be Marshawn Lattimore good to justify this or better I mean if he's Marshawn Lattimore good it's it's you kind of just look at it and go oh, okay can't really hate you for it if he's kind of good this pick sucked Especially when you've got Bradley Chubb on the board and some of these other guys on the board, uh, I just don't get it. Trade out of the spot if that's if that's the case. I just I, I would be shocked if Denzel Ward ended up being a really good pick. Bradley Chubb to the Broncos was a complete shock, and I guess I don't really know why. I mean, it should have at least crossed my mind at some point, but it really just didn't. Um, I assumed it was a quarterback. I had actually heard a rumor, and I, I might have mentioned it on here once before, but somebody has said something to the effect that. Um, the, uh, Elway is really scared about getting it wrong, uh, you know, because he's a Hall of Fame quarterback and he's very respected. And the thought of not being able to acquire a talented quarterback would just be devastating. So you kind of wonder, maybe there was like a, a guy like Sam Darnold or whoever that he really liked. And some of these other guys, he's scared of, of picking them and failing or whatever. But either way, all that speculation aside, uh, Bradley Chubb, to the Broncos. They did essentially what I thought Cleveland should have done to pair a really good pass rusher with your already really good pass rusher to have a dominant pass rusher duo. You look at some of these teams that are really, really good. What do they have? They have really good defenses, and their really good defenses do what? They have a good defensive front. You look at the Eagles. They're just stacked with talent up front. You look at the, the Vikings and all this stuff. I mean, even their corners, why, are their, why is their coverage good? Why can the Vikings have a good defense when they really don't have all that good of corners? Because they can get after the quarterback and because you cannot run on them. They make you one-dimensional and they scare the crap out of your quarterback. That's what it is. So the Denver Broncos acknowledge that. The Cleveland Browns didn't quite figure that out. Uh, we'll see how that ends up panning out. But I definitely look at that and say Denver Broncos made a much better decision than the Cleveland Browns did. I like that one. I like the Bradley Chubb thing. I, I do wonder a little bit because I, I remember like when Bradley Chubb at some point was expected to be a late first-round pick. And I was kind of watching film on some of these guys just doing a cursory check, probably around this time of year, like just after the draft, kind of looking into it. And I remember, and I'm always doing this, and I'll, I'll do it again next year, and I, I want to do that right away. I, I don't want to look at any big boards. I want to just look at film and go, I like this guy, then this, dit, 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 and then kind of shuffle it. And, you know, occasionally I'll be like, this guy's the best, and then everyone will be like, that guy kind of sucks. And, I, you know, you kind of work it out from there. 
But I remember thinking, I don't know why Bradley Chubb is all the way back here. He's really good, like really good. But I kind of think maybe he's going a little too high. I don't know. We'll, we'll see. I, I don't know. I don't, I don't feel like he was maybe a number one overall. That kind of came out of nowhere very recently. Where I don't know, maybe like a month or maybe even two months ago. I don't know. Where all of a sudden it's like, no, Chubb is a freak. Not like eighth overall or anything. No, he's he's like number one. So anytime, same with Denzel Ward. It just when it when that happens out of nowhere, I'm a little skeptical. That being said, you put him on the opposite side of Von Miller. How do you suck? I don't know. Nobody cares about you. You're that good, and everybody's paying attention to the guy on the other side. He'll be fine. It's going to be really good for the Denver Broncos. And congratulations to them. Colts and Quentin Nelson, this one was just seemed to be a no-brainer. I, I had gotten just about every single – I think I got everything wrong. I, I did not say Baker. I did not say Saquon. I did not say Darnold. I did not say Ward. I did not say Chubb. But I nailed this one. But I, I was still just kind of like, I don't know what's going on. Who knows who they're going to pick. Um, but it just makes so much sense, man. They, they need to protect their quarterback so badly. They need, need, need. And this guy's just, he's a freak. He's so good. It was a no brainer. It was a great pick. I mean, I guess kind of boring when you see it coming and it actually happens, you know, it's kind of like a fist pump. Cause I was like, yeah, I got one right. But it was like, eh, it's boring. All right. What's next? Not a Josh Allen fan. Just not, not at all. I don't get it. Uh, we'll see. Uh, I would say, at best, he's going to be sort of a Tyrod Taylor, which really sucks. The good thing about a guy just being a complete bust is you kind of look at it and go, well, that sucked. Let's try to get another quarterback. If you get a Tyrod Taylor guy, and I've been defending him for a while, but the Andy Daltons, the Tyrod Taylors, the Joe Flacco's even, as much, you know, yeah, he won a Super Bowl, but he's not good. The problem with these guys, and Flacco was a bad example, because ultimately it's, it's nearly impossible to win a Super Bowl with these guys. But you don't want to get rid of them because they're kind of good. So you just ride it out. And you get a situation like Dalton where you need a new quarterback, but you're not willing to part with this quarterback. So you're just kind of stuck for like 10 years just being mediocre. Very dangerous game. Uh, It's possible he's a freak. Unlikely he's a freak. I would say best case scenario if he's not very good is that he's just horrible and the Bills need to move on. You know, get somebody in free agency next year, something, whatever. Um... I just I would be surprised if he's very good. I just I I I've heard several people ask it, but what what exactly is it about him? Don't say strong arm because who cares? Who ca- it's it's like drafting someone cuz they're fast. Who ca- what Name the best wide receivers and tell me they're 40 times. Is is there a direct correlation? Absolutely not. The the top fastest co- court or wide receivers put them in Top 10 in the last five draft drafts, how many of them are top wide receivers? I would bet probably zero. So why is Josh Allen all of a sudden like, oh, dude, he can throw it like 90 yards? So? <laughs> I don't care. Whatever. Uh, Roquan to the Bears. Um, I don't know. That That's another one where as an evaluator, as a junior kind of just doing it for fun evaluator, um, I'm going to play, pay real close attention because I don't, I don't like it. And I'm coming around to it real slowly. You know, when I first started doing this several years ago, I just want to see the big thumpers. And those are my favorite guys, and they don't usually pan out that well. So I'm realizing and having to concede that it's the Roquan Smith types that are the good linebackers. But still, he's so soft. He's so soft. And it, it's just interesting. It'll be, you know, when, when people say he's going to be a Brian Urlacher type, I'm like, dude, I watched Brian Urlacher very closely as a Packers fan, that guy was a beast. That guy was a monster. He was not afraid to take on a block. How How is he and Roquan even... I don't know. I'm just going to watch. I'm going to shut up, and I'm going to watch, and if he's a freak, then I know. All right, I'm looking for Roquan Smith-type guys from now on. And when I see a guy who I, I could care less, right, if somebody touches him and he goes flying 10 yards, pfft, didn't even see it happen, doesn't matter. I don't care. Because that's not even important, right? You don't need to take on blocks. Just when you happen to be unblocked, how fast are you? If that's all that matters, yeah, Roquan's a freak. But I'm still skeptical. Um, Not super thrilled because he's the Bears, and you kind of know in the back of your mind that although he has some deficiencies, the areas where he's good, he's like elite-level good. Um, So it scares me a little bit, but we'll see. I'm, I'm not overly, I don't know. 
Um, I'm kind of hoping the Packers get Will Hernandez today. That's my number one. I know all the Packers fans want Landry. I want Will Hernandez. I would love to see Will Hernandez just run up and uh, smack <laughs> Roquan Smith right in the mouth. Just be like, what are you doing, man? He would push him 40 yards. I'm not even kidding you. Mike McGlinchey to the 49ers. I kind of like this pick um, for a couple reasons. One is sort of a selfish reason, and that is I kind of saw this coming. Not not this exact pick. I'm not going to be stupid about it. I never saw this specifically coming. But Mike McGlinchey going early just because there's no tackles. Tackles are like, what, the second most important position in this entire draft, like a, a premier left tackle. There's really just one. I mean, you could argue maybe Connor, blah, 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 blah. pretty much just one. Right, Connor has his issues, and uh, you know Orlando Brown was thought maybe for a while, and then he did like four push-ups, and that was all he can do, and he ran like a 17-second 40 time, so he dropped into like the fourth round. I don't know when he's gonna get drafted. Uh, we saw Isaiah Wynn go. Uh, kind of seems like maybe they might try him at tackle, although the Patriots did just trade for a tackle, so I'm not really sure what they're doing there. Might be a guard prospect, but. If you need a tackle, you want a tackle, just like quarterbacks, super important, so you reach on them. It just made sense in my mind that Mike McGlinchey was going to go early because he's always been a consistent, surefire thing, middle of the first round. Why? I mean, if he's if he's valued at like 14, 15, where he has been almost all year, it makes sense if there's going to be a little bit of a reach, a team 9 or 10-ish that needs a tackle is going to reach on McGlinchey. So, and that's another team, too. Um, you know, you look at the 49ers and... Um, you want to protect your quarterback. It just makes sense, right? Very important position. You got your guy at quarterback, next most important position. Well, pass rusher might be. I don't know. Pass rusher, left tackle, it's pretty much interchangeable, right? If, if quarterback is the most important, then protecting him and stopping theirs is basically the same thing. Um, so I, I would say they're pretty equal in terms of uh, value. In my mind, left tackle might be more valuable because if tackle is most important, protecting that guy probably more important than going and getting your guy. Because if this guy's done forever, this is just one game. Right? i got to beat that guy today. This guy's my quarterback for the next 10 years. So, just my opinion. Josh Rosen of the Cardinals, very, very happy for the Cardinals. I don't really know why. I should hate them um, because it's an NFC West team and those guys are just battering the Packers constantly. But I'm happy for them, man. I, you know, I like that team. Um, I, I like what they... I, just, I guess in a way I kind of feel sorry for them because they come so close and they've got so much talent, but it's so much aging talent, and it's like you feel it crumbling. And it's a terrible time to crumble because you got all these young, aspiring teams that are just freakishly good now. you got the Jaguars and the Eagles and the Vikings and all these teams that are just so good. It's teams like the Packers and the Cardinals that are kind of like just they're like here all the time. All of a sudden it's like, we just suck now, and this is, we can't compete with this new NFL. Everybody's so good. So I felt bad for him. So it's kind of cool now because you got a real young stud, and now you've got a you know potentially the best quarterback in this draft. Uh, you got him at ten. I think that's pretty awesome. You got something you can build around. It's going to be a little while um, to kind of rebuild this team, but I, I like it, man. If, if this guy can pan out, if you can uh, fortify that offensive line, you've got an unbelievable running back. You've got a great tradition with defense over there. I don't know. I, I That'd be something to keep an eye on. I'm, I'm surprised he fell to 10 of all the, the quarterbacks in terms of value and who I would put my money on. Even before the draft, I might have said Rosen just because he felt like the safest pick. But you give me, if you ask me who's the best value and you tell me Rosen's at 10 to the Cardinals, nah, I'd probably go Rosen. Uh, Minka Fitzpatrick to the Dolphins I think makes sense. I think they had two options. One, you take... Um, the best player available, or two, you trade back because you need a lot of stuff because they do not have anything. Um, and I think they went with the first option. Minka Fitzpatrick is a you know just a really really good piece to build around. He's not going to get you into the playoffs, right? But don't. What's the? Why would you get a quarterback and have nothing around him? You don't have an offensive line. You don't have a running back. You don't have a defense. So what is the point, right? Build up the pieces. Make the quarterback kind of the last last-ish kind of piece. Not Don't need everything in place, but make sure he at least has an offensive line. A run game would be nice. A defense that can actually stop somebody. Somewhat, right? So it makes sense. Um, again, either trade back or just take a really high-level guy. And you have to have a really good grade. It's got to be like one of these 
call them freakish type guys, and I think Minka falls into that category. A, a rare prospect, you know, not 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 just kind of one of these. Yeah, whatever. He's top of the board. Um, he's he's another tier, we'll say. So I like that pick. Vita Vea to the Buccaneers. I'm always surprised too whenever you see something, and I'm shocked, and everybody on TV is just kind of like, "Oh, that totally makes sense. I totally understand that." And I'm like, "Really? Because I never heard you say that. I never heard anybody say that ever." So I was very, very surprised by that. Um, I don't know. I, I, I like Vita Vea a lot. Um, I just think he's going to be – I think he's a safe pick. I think he's kind of undervalued in terms of, you know, we talk about Quentin Nelson being safe and all these other guys being safe. Vita Vea, I think, is safe. Um, it's going to be very hard to believe that he's going to suck. He is, what, 340, and he moves like Mike Daniels. Like, he, he's just – he's so fast, but he's so big – I don't know, man, and and, and kind of going with that whole late train of thought with teams realizing, like, get that defensive front, you know, get get your pass rushers and your interior pass rush, and just just let that be your fortification of your defense. Um, Tampa Bay, I don't know if that was their goal or what the situation was, but uh, that's going to help their defense quite a bit to be able to have a guy like a guy like Vita Vea there. Uh, Deron Payne, pretty much the same situation. I have to believe, you know, Washington is a team that it's like, yeah, they want Vita Vea. That was probably a little bit of a, a heartbreaker. But if you like Deron Payne, similar to Vita Vea, you're sitting at 13. When when 12 is on the clock, you're going, we're either getting Vita Vea or Deron Payne, and that's cool. So, you know, as a Washington fan, if you're a big Vita Vea fan, you're looking at it and you're you're kind of pissed about pick 12, but. Um, you know, Deron Payne is a guy that's been mocked way too late. He's been getting no love. You know, it's one of those things where the experts or whatever always say, you know, he's a top 10 guy, but then you look at the mocks and he's like end of the first-ish, and it just it never really balanced out. So it's kind of cool to uh, to see him get a little bit of love there at 13. Um, 14 with the Saints. Obviously, they traded up with the Packers. Um, I don't think I'm biased in saying the Packers got the better deal here. It's I, I don't understand that. I mean, you can use a trade value chart if you want. No question um, the value that they got was really, really good. They got a first-round draft pick. Um, so to give up a first for Davenport, I just don't get. Um, I had heard that apparently the the Saints were looking at it in terms of we have to get a pass rusher this year. So they, they are all in this year. Uh, which is sort of, as a fan, it's a little devastating uh, for a couple of reasons. One, I would just be pissed about this. Um, but it's also an all-in kind of strategy that's going to hurt you down the road. I mean, it's, it's, you're sort of almost admitting that. Like, it has to be that way. It can't be any other way because you're going to lose Breeze and you built a team around winning immediately around Breeze, whereas you, you gave up a first-round pick and you've got... And that's the other thing that I don't get about this. Marcus Davenport is a project. He's the kind of guy where it's like, no, he's going to be real good, might take a year. I mean, he's got to be good this year because we're going to win a Super Bowl this year. So, obviously, they disagree with that assessment. They're looking at it, and they're going, no, no, he'll be real good this year. He's going to come in, and and he can be. He's got that kind of power and that athleticism. He can be that kind of guy, but for my money... Uh, no chance. He, he, if you're sitting there at 14, it's kind of like, oh, sweet. You know, you wanted a pass rusher. He's pretty good. Eh, I would still have the same critique of it. I'm sorry. This It's so, it's like crooked. You see how it's like tight on this side and it's loose on this side? It's just, it's freaking me out. I'm being OCD about it. But even, even that initial critique where it's like, yeah, but is he the best guy? Because you want a guy that can impact immediately this year because Breeze might not be around. You know, what are we doing here? But to give up a first-round pick and move up and get a project, I, I think that was stupid. I really do. Um, Colton Miller to the Raiders I think was a bit of a surprise. But um, I think offensive line to protect uh, their quarterback is paramount, similar to what's going on with the uh, the Colts. They've got a young, very talented quarterback. And if, if they're going to be able to get this team to do what a lot of other teams are, they're going to have to continue to build around the pieces that they have. They have a, a decent core of a team. They've got some work to do, especially on defense. But protecting their quarterback has got to be priority number one. They haven't done a good job of that. Their quarterback's been taking a just horrific beating. And if they can't get that under control, they're going to lose him. And their hopes of ever being anything ever are gone. And all this money they spent on their coach and everything else, it was a complete waste. 
because it's going to be a full 10 years before you get another quarterback and all this other stuff to be able to rebound from losing this quarterback because we can't protect him. So Colton Miller made sense in that regard. Um, I kind of want to speed up. It wasn't supposed to take this long. Tremaine Edmonds, uh, he fell farther than I thought he would have. Uh, he's raw, but unbelievably freakishly athletic. Um, I thought that was a little weird. And the pick just made a ton of sense. Like I said, I was getting a bunch wrong, but I'm looking at this and I'm thinking, it has to be Tremaine Edmonds here, right? They need a linebacker. They need to, to, to help against the run so bad. Defensive lineman, linebacker, they've got their quarterback. It's got to be. So Tremaine Edmonds made sense. It was just a perfect fit. Um, Derwin to the Chargers. Um, the only thing I could think is the Chargers have so many good players on their team. Their defense is so scary. Their secondary, is, I won't even say especially because that's not true, but their secondary is incredibly scary, and now they add Derwin James. There's kind of a weird thing with the Chargers where if you just look at on paper, their team, it's like, man, these guys are good, but they just can't seem to put it together. And, uh, a, you know, a strong safety isn't going to fix that. You need a coach or some kind of a, a, a an attitude adjustment in the locker room or whatever it is, got to get that fixed. But uh, if they can figure that out, they have a team that can absolutely win a Super Bowl. There's no question in my mind that defense is so good. They have a very capable quarterback. They have weapons on offense if guys can stay healthy. They have additional picks. They can add more guys on offense. they got a good tight end. Unbelievable running back. That offensive line is going to be important. Hopefully these guys can kind of step it up. But there, there's no reason. There's no excuse for them not to be a playoff team this year. Zero. They need to be in the playoffs. They need to be a contender for the Super Bowl this year. If they can't, I don't think they ever will be. This team is as good as it's ever going to be. This team is as good as just about any team in the NFL. Um, so whatever their problem is, they need to get that adjusted. Jair Alexander to the Packers. Um, this is a recent thing. You know, Jair was thought of as an early second, and then Mike Mayock said, I think the Packers are going to take him at 14, and then everyone says the Packers are going to take him at 14 because it's like, oh, I knew it. The whole – that annoys me. But, um, you know, the more you look into it, the more it seems to make sense, and it's kind of interesting. I'm trying to process it a little bit myself. But with uh, – Ted Thompson was very well known as a best player available type guy. And when you look at the Packers' needs, slot corner was maybe one of the most important needs. So it's kind of like one of those things like, I wonder if this is kind of a need-based pick. Not not that he's not good. I mean, he was, by a lot of people's standards, he was the number one corner in this draft. Um, very few people, I think, said he was a bad value. Some people worry about his height, but I think that's absolutely stupid, which is something else people say Ted Thompson would never take him because he's so strict. And he's just strict in general, right? Always take the best player always go by these standards, right? He's a quarter inch too short. I don't care if he can compensate for it in other areas. He's too short. We're not picking him. And this is sort of a breath of fresh air because it's, you know, looking at 2018, we need a guard. We need a slot corner. We need another safety. Everything else is kind of manageable or wide receiver. We need real bad now. Um, you know, looking into the future, pass rusher, all this other stuff, but like to round out so that we actually have starters that just aren't horrible, that's pretty much what we need. And he goes out, he gets one of the best corners, the slot corner. It just, it just fits, right? And he, he's a freak athletically. And it's like, I don't care about the quarter inch. I don't care that maybe Derwin was a little bit better and we traded away that spot. I don't care because it just didn't make as much sense. We're just going to pick this guy. And it's a perfect fit. And he's going to start day one. He's going to have zero competition in the slot. Instant automatic upgrade. Garen, guaranteed. It, it's... Talk about can't miss. There's zero competition for slot on this team. Maybe in the later rounds he'll have some competition if we pick up another one somewhere along the line. But as of right now, he, he got the job. He won. Congratulations. You are the slot corner. Leighton Van Der Esch to the Dallas Cowboys. Um, I don't know. I, I, Van Der Esch is another one that's kind of hard to gauge. I like him. Um, the reason I say it's hard to gauge is because he was kind of a late second, and then he kept climbing early second, and then he climbed into the first round. Every time that happens, I'm just kind of like, whatever. He sucks. He's not that good. I don't know why he's up here. I, I see white inside linebacker, and I'm like, no, you're a fourth rounder. I know how this goes. Jake Ryan, Blake Martinez, <laughs> I know how this goes. You don't belong in the first round, sir. But you watch him, and he is very good. And I, I think the Dallas Cowboys got a real good football player. There's some concern about his neck, which I don't know how. The guy's neck is a tree trunk. I don't know how that could ever get injured. But uh, there are apparently some injury concerns about his neck. Um, 
you know, Dallas Cowboys have some some guys that are probably going to be moving on at the linebacker position. So I, I think that's a, that's a at worst it's a safe pick. If I, that's the rudest thing I could possibly say about that pick is that it's safe because I, I think he's going to be an instant starter, an instant contributor. Um, and I think getting that defense kind of uh, thumping a little bit is going to be good. Offensive line for them, I think, is going to be the biggest thing. Not just because I'm big on offensive line, but when they had that dominant offensive line, you you get your running back going crazy. You got your quarterback doing crazy stuff, and it's just that's a primary thing. But it, having a real good complement at defense and a guy like Van Der Esch, who's right in the middle, who's going to play maybe you know that sort of Mike inside kind of field general type guy. Um, you know, it could, could could potentially change the culture there a little bit. Not to say that they have a crap culture, but I don't think a Dallas defense is scaring anyone necessarily. Frank Ragnow to the Lions um, was actually really surprising. I, I thought I thought I was going to nail that one too with Geis or some running back, presumably Geis. Um, but I, I liked the pick just because this is another one that's vindication for me because I remember watching centers and I remember watching Frank Ragnow first. Um, and I remember at the time he was a third round pick and I'm thinking, why this, this guy is so good. He's so die. He, he was, he's like Will Hernandez, just, he's snapping the ball in the, in the inside. He was freakishly good. And I'm, I'm just sitting here watching. I don't know anything about football because this guy is just so good. Why, why is he, why is Billy Price? And I'm not trashing Billy Price. Why is he a first rounder in front? Didn't make any sense. So just seeing his name and being the first one to go made me very happy because for me, he was my favorite. I never really bragged about it because, you know, I just figure I'm, I'm wrong, right? That's that's what happens, right? I stay in my lane. I, if you ask me, I'll say, yeah, I think Frank is better, right? Just like I said, uh, who was it? Uh, da, 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 da. He got drafted. Rashawn Evans. I liked him better than Roquan. Just did because he could at least take on blocks. And I, I acknowledge he's not as fast and shifty, but I... You gotta at least take on a little bit of a block for me to to like you and want you, but I just don't. Rashawn Evans, next up. Uh, as I said, I like him. Uh, I think he was undervalued. I thought he was, you know, if you take, I think because you had guys like Roquan, you just didn't really talk about Rashawn Evans. But I think Rashawn Evans is really, really, and just the fact that he's an inside linebacker that went at 22, that's respect. That's that's nearly as crazy as a center going at. Uh, actually, I didn't talk about Billy Price, but uh, anyways, I'll go backwards. A center going in the first round is crazy. An inside linebacker going in the first is crazy, too. It's it's just that's serious respect. You know you're a good football player in that situation. Billy Price to the Bengals. I love that pick. Um, Bengals need offensive line. They could have gone tackle. That would be a reach. They could have gone guard. Isaiah Wynn, I think, would have been a really good pick. But I think Billy Price is probably a better football player um, than Isaiah Wynn. Just my personal opinion. Uh, either way would have been fine, but they needed offensive line. They got a real good one. I think that's a real good pick. Isaiah Wynn to the Patriots is a little surprising. Obviously, Isaiah Wynn is a good football player. I think it's a good value at 23, but you look at it, and it's like, are you taking him to be a tackle? <laughs> that was my first thought. Like, you going to try it, Patriots? Because he played tackle, and he was good at it, but, you know kind of kind of got those short arms that's a little weird I don't know if that's going to work out too well so I don't know I mean they, they did just uh, trade for a tackle I don't know I don't know we'll, we'll see what happens I just that that kind of kind of got me thinking I wonder if they're going to go that route otherwise you know maybe it's just this is the best guy on our board and he's a really good football player we want him on our team so we're going to draft him DJ Moore to the Panthers is awesome. I think I've mocked them there before. Uh, it's just it's just a, a really good fit, you know. I, I, as soon as I heard that, I remember um, saying to my buddy who I was watching the draft with, I said, "I guarantee you, Panthers fans are real happy about this." And I could be wrong. I don't know. Maybe there's somebody still on the board that people like. Maybe Calvin Ridley was getting people excited, whatever. But as soon as I saw DJ Moore, I said, "Yeah, man, for sure, that's a good pick." Um, a lot of people had him as the number one wide receiver. It certainly wasn't unanimous about Calvin Ridley. Um, hard to believe DJ Moore isn't going to be a good pick for that team. Hayden Hurst to the Baltimore Ravens I did not like at all. Uh, I didn't think Hayden Hurst was the best tight end in this class. I did not certainly did not think he was worth the 25th overall. I didn't think any of them were. He's just being 25 years old is kind of iffy. Um, you know, he's a baseball player that, like, had a nervous breakdown and ended up leaving. It just... 
I don't know. And, and, and you just look at tight ends overall, first round or any round for that matter, tight ends, they just don't really materialize. So what is it you're going to get out of this? And I'll just skip ahead anyways and talk about their other uh, pick, Lamar Jackson. I think you've probably heard this before, but sort of the weird thing about how much do you like Lamar Jackson if you're willing to take a 25-year-old tight end at 25? I just don't get that. Like at 25, Lamar Jackson's there. You like Lamar. You want Lamar, but you take a tight end. Like even if even if it's like okay, we like Hayden Hurst this much and we like Lamar Jackson this much. I don't care. This guy's a quarterback. This guy's the future of your franchise. Nah, I'll take the 25-year-old tight end more. I like him more. That does not. That, that, that just doesn't compute with me. So I, I can't help but look at this and just feel like disorganization even as the draft was going on they kept trading back i was just laughing like i i just feel like they don't really know what they're doing like they're just trying to trade back to get wide receivers they go too early for this tight end and then they draft a quarterback a few picks later and it's like why didn't you take the quarterback at 25 i don't like their management over there i don't know what's going on but just something about it is something's wrong and i'm just saying I don't like it, and I don't have a lot of... That's not good for Lamar either, because this this is the team now that has to craft a brand new offense to support Lamar Jackson. Now, it's the coaching and the front office are different people, maybe whatever, but I just... I wasn't happy to see Lamar go there, because I wanted, again, I wanted to see him succeed. I was hoping he would do well. Um, just because it would be nice to see a Michael Vick type come back, but I just don't have a lot of hope for him in that uh, on that team. Calvin Ridley to the Falcons. I think if nothing else, regardless of who you think, you know, is he a good value? I think probably 26 is a pretty good value for Calvin Ridley. Um, but even if you look at it like, well, there's better people on the board they probably should have taken. As soon as your mind realizes that Julio Jones and Calvin Ridley are on the same team, it's really hard to say that was a bad pick. Because it's just like, that sucks for everyone that isn't the Falcons real bad. Now, conversely, defense seems to be what's going to win you championships. You know, the Falcons had that freakish offense and it just didn't quite get the job done because their defense sucked, right? They couldn't hold the Patriots and their offense failed also. Like, if they could have just, like, kicked a field goal at some point. But whatever, you know, whatever. It's... It's a weird strategy that doesn't seem to be working for them, and they're just going to triple down on it, going offense, 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 just trying to blow everybody out of the water. As a Packers fan, I can attest to the fact that that does not work. But uh, do your thing, man. Go ahead and stack up on those uh, offensive players. Rashad Penny to Seattle, I think, is pretty unanimous. That was not a very good pick. It, nothing against Rashad Penny. Nothing in regard to why you know Seattle needing a, a running back. Clearly they do, but why not trade back? Right, you don't have a second round pick. We want Rashad Penny. We're just gonna take him. No, man, trade back. Even if so, if you can trade back to even like ten in the second round, and you you pick up, maybe you pick up like a late sack. I don't I don't know. Whatever. You need the picks for one, so you get the picks. You need a running back. There's a real good chance Penny's there, but even if he's not, you got Chubb, you got Jones. There's a bunch of there's a pile of them. There's no way they're all gone. Just do it, man. Just trade back. And you know what else you need? You need offensive line. So if I'm them, I'm looking at them going, let's trade back. Let's get another pick. And we're only going back, what? Uh, 27, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 15 picks. We're going back about 15 picks. There's going to be offensive tackles. There's going to be offensive guards. There's going to be a center. There's going to be, you know, three running backs. I mean, just three running backs right there is... is I don't know. I, I don't get it. I mean, I don't want you to trade way to the back of the second round necessarily, but um, I, I don't get it, man. I just don't. I just don't get that. I mean, I, I have to assume. See, and this is the other thing. Seattle had that one really good draft, and you kind of look at it and go, man, these guys know what they're talking about, right? Ex-Packer personnel guy, so you kind of root for them as a Packers fan. Um, but uh, since that draft, I feel like they've done really poorly, and they've done a lot of stupid stuff. And you look at this and you just go, I hate to say it, but if I'm the ownership over there at for Seattle, I'm looking at this and going, we need to consider our options here. This might be the last year 
for him be, as a GM because this seems stupid, right? He had one real good year. Every year since has been somewhat of a failure. We have not been able to remedy this offensive line despite all our efforts. We continue to build and get more and more running backs and more and more running backs, and none of these guys can run the ball. All the while, we're focusing on these areas that we're not able to fix. Our defense is deteriorating, and we're allowing it to deteriorate and not replenishing the talent like we should be doing. And now we draft another running back, even though we have a huge pile of running backs, and we don't have a line that can block for this new running back. I mean, if I'm ownership, I'm looking at this and going, he's got one one more year. And, I mean, this guy had better be really good or he is gone. Schneider is who I'm talking about. I couldn't think of his name, John Schneider. But I don't like the pick. Terrell Edmonds to the Pittsburgh Steelers. Um, you know, for me, I like Terrell Edmonds just because he's a big physical guy. Just like He looks like his brother. So just from a physicality standpoint, I'm thinking, I don't know why he's such a late guy. But I will concede that this is too early. The, the one thing that I had heard somebody mention is that, you know, it's possible the Steelers see this as, well, first of all, they absolutely were going to take a safety in the first round, or first two rounds, probably the first round. Why Terrell Edmonds, I'm not sure, but I think the physicality had a had a had something to do with that, and I think his primary responsibility is going to be covering tight ends. And uh, if you think about, you know, the fact that they really struggled to beat the Patriots, I think that's a real big thorn in their side, and they're looking at it and they're saying, Okay, Gronkowski, but also guys like Gronkowski. What are we going to do about that? How are we going to remedy that? And you look at even a lot of these other guys that are these uh, safety linebacker hybrid type guys. Are they really guys, you know, 220, 230 pounds-ish? Are they going to take on Rob Gronkowski? I don't know. But this dude, I mean, he's I think he's like 237, so he's he's big. He's not Gronkowski big, but... I I just think that's part of it. They're looking for that hybrid guy, but they want the guy to legitimately be a powerful kind of person. And for what they're looking for, I'm willing to be open on it, right? He he doesn't fit the big board list, but I'm willing to to at least admit that there's a chance this could actually work out pretty well. So I'm I'm gonna kind of wait and see on that. Taven Bryan to the Jacksonville Jaguars was surprising. I absolutely thought Lamar Jackson was going to go here. I think that would have been a much better fit. I think Lamar Jackson had a real shot at winning that job that year. As I mentioned in uh, my last mock or whatever time it might have been, um, I feel like they're one decent quarterback away from a Super Bowl. I I really think their quarterback is what held them back. Everything was going perfectly, but they, they... Blake Bortles just could not do the simplest stuff, and it was so aggravating as someone that was rooting for the Jaguars to do well. Um, it was so aggravating to watch this team dominate and then have a quarterback just not be able to execute the most basic stuff. It drove me absolutely nuts. So I, I thought Lamar, you know, it, it's a system he could work in. Um, you've got the, the, the strong defense that's going to help you out. You've got uh, a real strong run game that's going to be able to help you out. I just thought it would be a good situation for them. But they went with uh, defensive tackle. I think they're following that Eagles uh, kind of thing too, just stacking up on the defensive front and uh, really doubling down on that. Uh, they've got some, some age along there, so they want to make sure that they're staying young, which is also very important. Um, you know, you don't want that stuff to deteriorate. So from that standpoint, that makes sense, right? This isn't just about... We're doing well now. Let's really try to go all in, and then who cares about two, three years from now? Let's no. Let's let's keep this thing going, man. Let's we we found a winning formula. Let's stick with it. Mike Hughes. I've never been a huge fan, but I guess I get it. You know the Vikings. They have a dominant defense despite not having really good corners. You add some really good corners to this team, and you know they've got the quarterback. They've got the wide receivers. They've got the running back. Presumably, I'm assuming he's going to be pretty good. Your, your defense, excluding your corners, is unbelievably good. If you can add some corners to this defense and uh, work on that offensive line, I mean, th- there's no reason this team isn't a Super Bowl team. There's just no way around it. As much as it makes me sick to my stomach to say it, I can't in any real way think of a reason why the, fa- the Vikings are not going to be a dominant team. I mean, being completely unbiased, they should win the NFC North. I mean, it it's it's theirs to lose. I mean, literally, they did win it, so it's theirs to lose. But, you know, they, they have everything they need. Um, so my 
the, I guess the biggest question is, is Mike Hughes the guy, right? For me, he's not. I didn't really get the Mike Hughes thing. I think guys like Isaiah Oliver and some of the other ones I really liked. But uh, Mike Hughes, a lot of people really liked him. Vikings front office really thought apparently that he was the guy. So there you go. Uh, Sony Michel to the New England Patriots. I want to look. I almost think I mocked them to the Patriots in the second round. I know it was a running back. I could be wrong. Maybe it was Chubb. But either way, I, I get the pick for the reason that I had them taking a running back. He is a uh, replacement for Deion Lewis, um, whatever his name is. I don't know why that feels like it's wrong. I'm pretty sure that's right. But he's a replacement, and he's and he's actually an upgrade uh, over him. He's a really, really talented guy, and it could actually give the the Patriots a dy- dynamic that they've never really had. You know, they, they've always just kind of had this thing where it's like, we're just going to kind of pick a couple guys that can just kind of fill a role. But imagine if they actually have a designating run- designated running back that's just a freak. It's uh, hard to imagine the Patriots getting exponentially better, but it could actually happen. If they can maintain their defense as being as good as however they are good, you know, not elite, but certainly pretty good. Um, And you've got your quarterback and you've got your tight end and you've got all these wonderful things working out for you. And now you add a legitimate run game, uh, like a top running back and all that. I think Deion Lewis actually was a top five running back last year, but let that be a consistent thing with a guy that's even more explosive than that. Um, I mean, the, the Patriots have a, a Super Bowl caliber team already. They're one of the teams like the Eagles, like the Jaguars, like the Vikings, like a lot of these teams that are this far down that they don't need the draft. They could start playing today, and they're automatic contenders. So um, adding guys like this is just just bulking. We're just adding some bulk is all we're doing. Um, and I already talked about Lamar, so there you have it. That's just sort of my off-the-cuff uh, kind of thinking real quick. Uh, I wish I could have done a live stream, but... Um, I had I have plans tonight that ruined my plans to do a live stream every night, so I kind of just said to heck with it. I went to a friend's house yesterday. Um, probably won't do Saturday either because it's during the day and my family will be here and home, and I know my wife's going to say I need help, and it's going to be very long, so there's no way I'm going to be able to sit down here without helping out. and Just forget it. Maybe next year, whatever. But um, anyways... Please leave some comments. Uh, get at me at the on the Facebook group if you want to uh, talk to me directly. I'm pretty accessible with that kind of stuff. Give me your comments, and uh, you know, I'm not a super arrogant guy. I don't think so. I, I'm, I'm open to criticism. I hear things all the time, and I always like to to learn new stuff. And I one of the things when I started this channel was to say, you know your team better than I know your team. So I want to learn from you. I'm not. I'm not doing this because I'm the expert on all things. I'm doing this because I love to talk about it, and I like bringing people together, and and it's a good way for me to learn, and it's a good way to open up dialogue and all this kind of stuff. So um, please go ahead and leave comments if I got something wrong about your team or if you have some other insights. Um, And also, be sure to get in the groove, and let's talk about day two because I want to have some insights on day two. What is your team thinking about doing? Um, Packers have already talked about being much more active, or uh, more active, continuing to be active. They said based on the way their board is, they plan on moving. To me, what that means is they gave away the third round pick, and there's no way we're just having one pick because there's so much talent. So they're probably going to package up some stuff and move up a little bit. Um, so it, you know that's a little insight for the Packers. But it, you know if you've got some of those insights, like mm, who might be a good trade partner, you know. You looking to trade back? You looking to trade up? What you looking to do, man? Um, I'm just looking to talk football 24-7, all day long, every day long. Um, but we got another big day coming up, man. Day two. Day two. I'm so excited. Um, you guys enjoy your day. I hope you guys got some fun plans. Uh, be smart. Be safe. Have fun. Uh, go Pack Go. And I will talk to you all tomorrow. Mm, my computer froze. All right, bye.